What's up guys, Mainman Sui here, hoping you're all doing awesome as always and welcome to my brief review of The Batman, a movie I really, really enjoyed. I would put it at 7.5 out of 10. Initially coming out of a the theater, I was like a solid 8 for sure, super good. Um, but the more I think about it, probably a 7.5, but so still like very positive, just not like uh, in amazing territory or like masterpiece. Uh, for comparison, I felt uh, Joaquin Phoenix's Joker from 2019, Todd Phillips movie, uh, that one was like a 10 out of 10. That's the best superhero movie I've ever seen, but it's mostly because it's not really a superhero movie. I, I like the more... Uh, sorry for using the word, I'm not trying to sound pretentious, but more intelligent superhero movies where it's more of a character study, more psychological. Like uh, Logan, for example, I thought was really good. Um, and Joker, a very dark drama character study. Uh, the craziest action in the movie is basically firing of one gun. And it's a hundred times more dramatic than a 40 minute Avengers uh, cutscene, you know, beating CGI monsters. Uh, I just prefer that sort of stuff where it's very very character driven, uh, things have a lot of emotional weight. Um, but uh, yeah, enough about that. Uh, the Batman, yeah, 7.5 to me out of 10. Uh, I think I'm gonna talk about the positive first, uh, first and then I'll get into some, what I thought were <laughs> nice or some of the flaws of the movie. Uh, so first off, this is the take I like on Batman, like super dark, psychological, we get to see Detective Batman. I mean, 80% of the movie was basically Detective Batman. I was blown away by and surprised at how little action there was in a three hour movie of this type. I mean, it's got to be a record, I think, how little action in a three hour long superhero movie. Uh, but I liked it. Uh, I liked the detective stuff, but I do have to say a little bit more action would have, I don't know. I, I'm normally I'm the guy who says like, uh, please cut down on the 40 minute action scenes. But in this one, I felt like it probably would have served the movie to have a tad more action. But yeah, that's just my point of view. I liked the psychological uh, take on Batman, how dark it was, detective noir. Uh, everything is dark, it's always raining. Uh, the producers and directors obviously wanted uh, a different Batman and holy hell are they... <laughs> what the fuck is this? I never played this game. Um, they definitely wanted uh, a darker take on Batman and to show off the more his more intelligent, brawny uh, abilities. You know, he, he is a detective. And they, they certainly did that. I uh, loved all of his scenes uh, with Gordon. I thought that was great. Uh, Robert Pattinson, I, he, he's an amazing character actor. Uh, I knew he was gonna bring his A game and my God, did he do that. Uh, I think my favorite Batman ever. Uh, previous, previously, I would say like Michael Keaton. I thought Ben Affleck did a good job, but uh, this, this was perfect. So again, they gave me the Batman I wanted to see, the broken Batman. I've never felt like Batman should be uh, normal. He, I mean, he is literally broken. That's why he does the stuff he does. No sane guy runs around in the middle of the night uh, caving in the face of uh, thieves and criminals, right? He's very damaged uh, from his past. He's broken. And I never got that from Nolan's movies. Uh, like Christian Bale's Batman and Bruce Wayne to me it was always too cheerful, normal, charismatic, uh, funny, uh, approachable, down to earth. I mean, it's like that to me was never Batman. It never really fit. So here we get the Batman I like that we see in the intro to... Uh, Burton's Batman Returns where he just sits in a dark room and suddenly the bat signal goes off and he stands up and he just looks very emotionless and stern. He's just sitting there in the dark waiting for that signal. That's Batman and that's the Batman we get in this movie. 
He's always Batman. Even when he removes his uh, cape, you know, outfit, whatever, mask, he walks around Batman. He never turns it off. I love that in this movie. It's like, uh, Pattinson, he doesn't talk a lot. Again, fits the character in my opinion. He just observes the world around him. And as Batman, he walks a certain way, he looks a certain way, he carries himself a certain way. And when he removes the mask and it's Bruce Wayne just interacting with the public, he does the exact, he moves the exact same way. Observes the world the exact same way. And I, I loved that. I thought they really nailed it. And Pattinson was great. The only thing I I would I, I felt was a little bit of a drawback with Pattinson, and it's uh, something my friend mentioned. He said, uh, you know, he's great, but he feels a bit too young. And I kind of agreed there. You want to see, but preferably Batman be a little bit o older and rugged, but that's a super tiny complaint. I thought it was pretty much perfect. And he was flawless as Batman. Uh, and uh, he carries the entire movie on his shoulders. Uh, so again, uh, loved the psychological uh, approach, the, the detective work. Uh, I thought the story was uh, pretty damn solid. Sometimes I had a little bit trouble following uh, the red line with... Uh, the Riddler's uh, plot, his uh, assassinations, you know, the murders uh, and all of that, and Batman and, and Gordon and Catwoman pu puzzling everything together. Uh, I think sometimes it got a little bit convoluted, um, but for the most part, it was, uh, it was very exciting. Uh, in terms of cinematography, the way the movie was lit, everything is very dark, everything was very Batman, uh, pretty much perfect uh and the art design the costumes i loved uh a little bit felt like a little bit more of a down-to-earth batman outfit and it was great um and i loved the the look of the penguin the riddler uh catwoman uh, in, in, ter in terms of like production design everything was perfect and the music was amazing the music was 10 out of 10 uh, I, I was kind of a, almost, uh, that was almost the high point of a movie, just listening to the soundtrack with every scene playing out. It was just like, um, I don't know how many times during the movie I, uh, I was thinking like, my god, how, how beautiful the music is right now. Um, and it's interesting, again, that there wasn't a lot of action, but the action that was there was amazing. I loved the intro, uh, the, the intro to Batman, him stepping out of the shadows. Oh, I loved how intense and scary Batman felt in this movie, but they really wanted to push how intimidating he is to all of these criminals. Um, and you really felt that, and the first scene, him stepping out of the shadows, uh, taking down this uh, gang in the subway. I thought that was handled super well. Super cool scene. Uh, but the scene I really want to mention when it comes to the action and pushing how intimidating Batman is uh, was the Batmobile. Uh, that was probably my favorite scene. And uh, I have a couple of scenes that come to mind when I think of my favorite scenes in the movie. But favorite one and biggest impact was when... Uh, Penguin spots this black car far away and it's it starts making noise brrr, and then it powers up brrr, and this big red red light comes on and he's immediately scared just by the look of this vehicle and then it just keeps making these super ominous loud noises and more lights go on and that was obviously the Batmobile powering up, and uh, it reminded me of like Steven Spielberg's movie The Duel, where it's his first movie, where a guy in a car is chased by a truck, and the truck is presented almost like a demon. He never gives a face to the driver of a truck. The face of the terror here is just the truck itself, and it's almost like, yeah, a demon chasing him. And that, that's what I felt with, with this, uh, the Batmobile in this movie. It felt like a living, breathing 
monster, like, you know, and uh, and just how um, how Penguin sells it, the close-up of his face and the fear, and um, uh, the ensuing chase. Um, I thought that was the, the best scene in the movie. It was uh, just incredible. And another scene I really liked was uh, it's in a church, I believe, and there's a dude who's taken hostage and there's a bomb. I don't want to spoil too much. You, If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. That scene was great, and then suddenly it follows with a scene at a police station, right? Involving Batman, and that scene also just uh, incredible. Um... And I liked how everything felt a little bit more grounded and, dare I say, realistic. It's almost like this movie exists in a middle ground between uh, Burton movies or Nolan's, Nolan's movies and uh, Joker, where Joker tries to keep it the most, like, legit and real. This one's somewhere in between, where it's hard to really pinpoint it. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so, so many great scenes. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm, that, that's where I'm going to stop with, uh, with the positives. But so overall, like, uh, a, a super good movie. Super good, and I really enjoyed it. Um, now, when it comes to, like, the problems, I felt the movie was a tad too long. Uh, I started... It, it was like the pacing of a movie... I felt like it for the last 60 minutes of a movie, it's, it is three hours long. And the last hour, I felt like it, it gave me that feeling of now it's wrapping up. This is the ending. Now it's wrapping up. Now it's wrapping But it just kept doing these detective trying to do plot twists and no, we're gonna keep going for a tad longer. And now this happens and this happens. And I, I felt like it was... Uh, it just dragged on for a little bit too long for my tastes and i thought it 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 could have had a bigger action climax in my opinion it felt a little bit anticlimactic although i really liked the scene towards the end where we get that direct connection where batman lights a flare and in the darkness uh reaches out with his hand and helps people and they trust him and he leads them to safety. I love that like direct connection of him helping the citizens of Gotham. I thought that was a lovely scene. And with the ending, you know, where everyone's being um, med, med evacuated with helicopters. Uh, but it dragged on for a little bit too long. Uh, could have... Overall, I would have liked more action. Um, bigger action climax would have helped the movie in my opinion. Uh, but my biggest gripe with the movie is actually in terms of characters. This is the Batman show. It's all about Batman. Uh, and I felt uh, for a three hour movie, the villains were underdeveloped. They were never given enough time to breathe. There were too many villains in the movie. You have Riddler, Penguin, Falcone, and... Uh, None of them got enough um, character buildup, in my opinion. Uh, they all felt they all felt felt quite anonymous to me. This certainly was no uh, Nolan movie, you know, with uh, uh, Ledger's Joker or even um, Bane, Ra's al Ghul, um, all of those uh, where, where the villains carry Nolan's movies this was where Batman carried the entire movie and it would have been so much better in my opinion where if if we had had stronger villains with stronger motives and uh, more fleshed out villain characters I think that that's something that was lacking from this movie uh, Pattinson and Batman carry the shit out of this movie and I also felt like, I don't know if Catwoman really needed to be there, but I thought she did a great job, the actress Zoe Kravitz, right? Uh, and I thought it was a pretty good take on Catwoman. I couldn't stand Anne Hathaway's uh, Catwoman. This one was better, 
but still nowhere near as good as Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman and Batman Returns. But it's an unfair comparison because that's a perfect take on that character. And I loved, uh, it felt like a homage to Burton's Selena Kyle, Michelle Pfeiffer, in her theme when it started playing. Anytime she would see her, that theme played. And it felt like a homage like to, to Danny Elfman's uh, Catwoman theme. But 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 uh, almost sound of nails on a chalkboard or however that's pronounced. I felt like that was there. Um, and then in terms of all the other characters in the movie, I felt like they weren't fleshed out enough. It's like uh, Alfred uh, liked Gordon, but uh, when you look at the supporting cast of Nolan's movies, you know you have Michael Caine as Alfred stronger character uh morgan freeman as lucius fox it's 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 insane in nolan nolan's movies how a pretty weak batman in my opinion christian bale is just surrounded by this amazing supporting cast um but so i think those are my thoughts on the movie it is probably my favorite batman movie so far i, I I'm, go I'm going to say that and after this movie it's batman returns and after that, it's it's the Dark Knight. I know a lot of people are inevitably going to compare this to Nolan's trilogy, and uh, I think the Dark Knight. You know, people like to talk about it like it's the best movie of all time. It's a pretty damn flawed movie. Uh, to me, the Dark Knight, and what 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 I think leads everyone to say it's a masterpiece. Is because when you think about that movie, all you think about is Heath Ledger as, as Joker. And yeah, it's uh, it's one of the best acting performances of all time. It's 11 out of 10. It's it's like Joaquin Phoenix in, in Joker. 11 out of 10. And again, I can't stress enough how amazing it is in the Joker, but... Uh, Marvel movies. Oh, we have an army. We have 10,000 VFX artists that costs a billion dollars making these 40 minute CGI uh, climactic endings. But what's a better special effect than that army of v v VFX dudes? What's a better special effect? A great actor with a great script. Joaquin Phoenix and Joker. He's the special effect. And my god, how, how great it is. Uh, so like, yeah, The Dark Knight, Ledger. Uh, incredible. But if you remove Ledger from the equation and you look at everything else... It's not a 10 out of 10 movie. And I mean, the whole thing with... Did that movie really need uh, Aaron Eckhart as uh, Two-Face? Did it really need that? I mean, that, that whole extra ending, you know, where um, uh, Joker is caught. And then suddenly, now we get, we're, now we got to resolve this with Two-Face. Uh... I don't know, always felt quite corny to me. Uh, and again, uh, I, I could never really stand um, the voice uh, Christian Bale would, uh, would do for Batman. Swear to me, I'm not wearing hockey pads. And always like very corny, like he overdid it. Um, and again, he was always too normal. Um, I could go into detail, uh, again, like The Dark Knight is a great movie, Batman Begins, uh, great movie, good uh, popcorn entertainment with a lot of art artsy features, uh, um, uh, never liked Dark Knight Rises, weak movie in my opinion. Uh, but so yes, I mean, I'm not gonna drag on too long with this, uh, I hope you enjoyed my review. Uh, so yeah, my favorite... Batman movie so far, 7.5 out of 10, uh, yeah, good shit, uh, so thanks for listening to me, and have a great day, take care.